Gracious and loving God, may only your words be spoken. May only your words be heard. Amen. Good morning, church. It is so good to be with so many of you here this morning. Thank you for continuing to experiment with us as we discover ways to be together uh, in joyful worship of God in ways that is safe and feels okay uh, to gather. I know that the reason so many of you are here this morning is because you heard through the grapevine that this morning is the launch of our fall stewardship appeal season. <laughs> I usually instruct the ushers to lock the doors at this point, but we need to keep them open for ventilation, so please remain in your seats. And that includes those of you joining us on Facebook Live or YouTube Live. We can see you click off. <laughs> Here we are, the launch of another season so much like ones before, and yet so very different. How often do you get to build or rebuild a church? In this part of the world, in our part of the country, most of the churches we drive by date their cornerstones to the 19th or 18th or even 17th centuries. The suburbs around us are sprinkled with some mid-20th century edifices, but few of us sitting in this room have been part of any laying of a cornerstone, defining the mission and architecture of a congregation from the ground up. If we have been, or if we had been, a part of the discussions we would have had would have centered around what we all understood to be essential in the church community we were building. We would have considered together what it was that was going to make up the character, the ethos, the essential core of this new church we were building called St. Paul's in Brookline. Now, I know that some of you may remember a moment akin to this experience in St. Paul's more recent past, when a fire completely destroyed the sanctuary in which we now gather in January of 1976, leaving only the exterior wall still standing. The gathered community, a church already in progress, needed to have many difficult and honest conversations about what it would mean to be St. Paul's going forward, if St. Paul's was going to go forward at all. From the stories I have been told from many of you, everything was on the table. From that discernment time, three things, connection with the community, support of music and the arts, and outreach through a percentage of our income to work beyond, beyond those fire-licked walls. These three things came to the center of St. Paul's identity. These ideals became part of our newly adapted DNA, and they continue to guide our decisions and inform our mission to this very day. Of course, there have been more times than that in our history for adjustments, for reshaping and refocusing. Each new rector called, each capital project you have completed, each new ministry you have begun or ended, they've all been adjustments in how we have continued to be a church already in progress, trying to hold fast and build up what we have come to understand as essential in our life together. But none of us were prepared for the foundation's shaking events of the past 18 months. Few of us, if anyone, was praying to do church online before we were forced to. And I know that even the introverts among us were not hoping that there would be an extended time during which we could not gather together. 
could not shake hands at the peace, could not offer a hug to a friend at coffee hour, or share the cup at communion. These past 18 months have forced us to consider over and over again what is essential to how we are being called to be God's church in this world God has given us. As we begin to gather again in this new time, we are wondering again how to piece our community life back together. We are asking once again, what is essential to being St. Paul's? What is essential to being church in this time and in this place to which God has called us? We did not shrink in this pandemic time. We adapted, and in some cases, we actually grew. Our racial justice ministry took on new shape and continues to ask new questions in our pursuit to create beloved community here and in this world. You will receive a letter from me in the next few days. And in that letter, I outline the multitude of ways we have stretched and adapted and grown and challenged ourselves to meet the demands of this new day. Remember with me, if you will, our choir singing outside, in the backyard, in snow. And we have grieved. And we are still grieving. And we will have more grieving to do as the toll this pandemic has taken on us becomes to be even more fully known. Two of the, <laughs> two of the members of this community who we lost during the pandemic were Ken and Maureen Carter. Ken and Maureen, sitting usually right over there, they met each other in Sunday school here at St. Paul's and they spent the next 70 years, 7-0, in each other's lives. Ken and Maureen were just two of the many great pillars of this St. Paul's community. I used to love to hear Ken and Maureen talk about the changes they had seen over their time in this place. How many times they watched the liturgy change the introduction of that new prayer book, and rector after new rector after new rector. And I can still, in Ken's own voice, still hear him describing to me what it was like for him to stand across the street on Aspenwall Ave and watch the church he knew and loved burn to the ground before his eyes. Ken and Maureen, with some of you present here this morning, took what was essential about St. Paul's and you brought it with you to the chapel that now serves as our great hall. And you continue to be a church already in progress while you asked hard questions about what St. Paul's would be moving forward. Thanks to Ken and Maureen and to the others of you who were a part of those conversations, we are here this morning. And we are so very different from the St. Paul's of 1976 when the fire struck. And yet, what was essential then remains. Because what is essential endures. And what is essential thrives. So here we are in 2021, returning to a church building many have not stepped in for almost two years. And we are wondering, what will be the same? What will remain? What needs to change? And of course, all of that is to ask, what is essential? I have, over these past 18 months, seen how St. Paul's 
is essential in the lives of so many, both members of this worshiping community and beyond. I have seen firsthand how the skills and talents you have offered to this community have been essential in our ability to continue to be church. And I know for a fact that your financial generosity in this time has been unwavering. Essential gifts to keeping the mission and ministry of St. Paul's going and growing. But, simply put, you are the essential gifts. Each one of you. Whether your first time here this morning or if you predate the fire, you are an essential gift from God to us. You are the essential gifts that St. Paul's needs to grow more fully into who it is God is calling us to be and to help us leave behind what no longer serves us in our pursuit of God's dream for this world. You are an essential gift simply for being the beloved child of God that you are. And your skills your interests, your talents, your questions, your hopes, these are all essential gifts the church needs to do the work God gives us to do in this time. And frankly, your financial support of St. Paul's is an essential gift. Whatever the amount, every dollar we give to the work of this place, of our shared ministry and mission makes possible things we are simply incapable of doing on our own. It makes possible our transformation into being who we simply cannot become, left to our own devices. We do this, all of this, with God's help and with each other's. Now, I cannot tell you this morning how this pandemic will change St. Paul's for the long haul. Only God's time will show us that. What I can tell you is that we have ambitious hopes and dreams for the possibilities that this time might hold for us. We want desperately to invest in our children and youth in innovative and exciting new ways. We want to continue to center our racial justice work, both internally and as agents of justice in our community and in the world. I am excited, honestly, and a bit overwhelmed by the possibilities that lay in front of us at this time. And I know that none of it, not one bit of it, will be possible if we do not, in whatever way we can, to the fullest extent that we can, all offer our essential gifts to the shared purpose and work of being St. Paul's. St. Paul's, a community seeking to follow Christ, learning to love God and love one another, a church already in progress and yet somehow brand new and never yet before. Your essential gifts are what is needed to become a brand new church already in progress. Essential gifts are what each of us have been given by God and what each one of us has to offer God in return. An essential gift, it's simply who you are. Amen.